Hello. The video you'll be seeing over the next 20 minutes is on Mercury and his health effects. Some of the things you may be seeing in this movie will be shocking and disturbing, but everything has been documented by medical science. The list that you see scrolling underneath my picture is a list of the diseases that are caused by mercury and have been proven symptom-wise to be associated with this toxicity of the heavy metal mercury and other toxic metals including lead and cadmium. Do you know a child that suffers from hyperactivity or attention deficit problems learning in school? Chances are good that the parent may have given this child mercury in, in utero, in fetus. Do you know people who have problems with mood swings, depression, anxiety, fear, difficulty comprehending, brain fog, memory loss, all the way to Alzheimer's, dementia? Any of these conditions and all of these conditions have been associated with mercury. Do you know anybody that has diabetes, cancer, autoimmune diseases such as fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue syndrome? These are all associated with mercury and other heavy metal toxicities. Physicians like myself who have been working with mercury and other heavy metals for years understand that even at small doses, these heavy metals can really cause problems with our systems. And that's what you'll be seeing in this movie. It is very difficult to detect mercury by standard testing. Most of the time it is missed. You'll see at the end of this movie how to properly test for mercury and how to easily treat it. But before we begin, I want to thank Dr. Robert Lemeg, the dentist who created and produced the following video, Quecksilver, The Strange Story of Dental Amalgams, and who graciously supplied these excerpts in the following shortened version. By the 1830s, use of dental amalgam had spread through Europe and the Americas. It seemed like progress. Dentists who used this new wonder material were called Quecksilver dentists, or quacks for short. The use of dental amalgam was vigorously opposed by the dental societies of the time because of its mercury content. Dental societies required their members to sign a pledge that they would never place this toxic material in a person's mouth. The quacks refused. There was major controversy and the existing dental societies in the USA and Sweden collapsed. New dental associations were formed by the quacks based on the use of dental amalgam as the best restorative for filling human teeth. These same associations still set the standards today. So what is dental amalgam? Amalgam, a mixture of one or more metals with mercury. The metal in this case is an alloy of roughly 40% silver, 30% tin, 28% copper and 2% zinc. The alloy is ground into a fine powder. That powder is then added to an equal amount of liquid mercury and mixed in the surgery to create a dental amalgam filling. Some of the mercury bonds with the surface of the alloy particles. The remaining free mercury escapes continually from the set material. It's a bit like bricks and mortar, where the bricks are the alloy and the mortar is the mercury. The mortar, the mercury, binds with the bricks, the alloy, at the surfaces. There is always free mercury remaining behind the surfaces, between the particles. In 1997, Cork Company, the manufacturers of dispersaloy, stated that their amalgam should not be used in the following situations. In proximal or occlusal contact to dissimilar metal restorations, in patients with severe renal deficiency, in patients with known allergies to amalgam, for retrograde or endodontic filling as a filling material for a cast crown in children six and under and in expectant mothers. Symptoms of chronic long-term low-level exposure to mercury vapour. Inhalation of mercury vapour over a long period may cause mercurialism, which is characterised by fine tremors and erythism. Tremors may affect the hands first, but may also become evident in the face, arms and legs. Erythism may be manifested by abnormal shyness, blushing, self-consciousness, depression or despondency, resentment of criticism, irritability or excitability, headache, fatigue and insomnia. In severe cases, hallucinations, loss of memory and mental deterioration may occur. Concentrations as low as 0.03 micrograms per cubic metre have induced psychiatric symptoms in humans. 
Renal involvement may be indicated by proteinuria, albuminuria, enzymuria and anuria. Other effects may include salivation, gingivitis, stomatitis, loosening of the teeth, blue lines on the gums, diarrhoea, chronic pneumonitis and mild anemia. Repeated exposure to mercury and its compounds may result in sensitization. Intrauterine exposure may result in tremors and involuntary movement in infants. Mercury is excreted in breast milk. Paternal reproductive effects and effects on fertility have been reported in male rats following repeated inhalation exposures. The material safety data sheet for Titan, manufactured by Kerkorp, states the placement of a dental amalgam in a patient will increase the levels of mercury in the body of the patient. Dental offices contribute between 12,000 and 50,000 pounds of mercury to wastewater each year in the United States. The American Dental Association have stated that the strongest and most convincing support we have for the safety of dental amalgam is the fact that each year more than 1,100 million amalgam fillings are placed in the United States. Let's look at those figures for a moment. Each one of these fillings weighs about a gram. Half of that is mercury. If we consider people to be part of the environment, then that means 550 tonnes of mercury is being placed in the environment in the USA each year alone and not subject to any hazardous waste protocols. All of these fillings leach mercury all the time. Most of that mercury stays in the body, where it is a cumulative toxin. What happens to all that mercury every year when people die? The only place dental amalgam is not regarded as toxic waste is in a living human mouth. Criteria 118, published by the World Health Organization in 1991, reports on dietary exposure to mercury. This was the first time that mercury from dental amalgam had been included as a dietary source of mercury. Air and water, negligible amounts. Other food, 0.3 micrograms per day of inorganic mercury. Fish and seafood, 2.3 micrograms per day of methyl mercury. Dental amalgam, 3 to 17 micrograms per day of mercury vapour. Their results indicate that dental amalgam provides a dietary source of mercury up to six times greater than all other sources combined, including seafood. A more recent study indicates that two-thirds of the mercury in the bodies of humans with amalgam fillings comes from the fillings. Is the mercury which is released from fillings absorbed into the body? Yes, but in extremely small amounts, that is, in millionths of a gram. This is a very small amount. Point naught, 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 one grams. Health Canada responded publicly to this material from the Canadian Dental Association. This answer is rather condescending and insulting to the intelligence of readers. 